Elon Musk is an absolutely ambitious man. To supply enough batteries for Tesla cars, he opened two huge battery factories in Nevada and New York in consecutive years. And now he's building a second Raptor factory in Central Texas, which will be the world's most advanced, not only specializing in rocket engines, but also making new parts for the Starship spacecraft. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. What's inside the revealed new mass production factory of SpaceX? This will surely amaze you and even NASA. If anyone loves and studies SpaceX, they know that all the ambitions for the company's rocket programs are not small. From Falcon 9 to now, it's Starship. Honestly, Starship alone is a bold idea, standing out with its ability to be fully reusable while cutting launch costs, promising to change how humanity views space science. However, for SpaceX and Elon, this is not enough. Besides the technical advantages of their rockets, they are also aiming to mass-produce Starship rockets. Not just a few or a few dozen Starships, but we can imagine thousands of Starships getting produced like cars. To realize this ambition, upgrading production facilities is essential. In late 2022, SpaceX began construction on its largest rocket manufacturing planet, Starbase, named Star Factory. To date, the exterior of the new factory is 80% complete. But what about on the inside? This has been a question among SpaceX fans for quite a while. Fortunately, recently through an interview by Everyday Astronaut, a famous YouTuber with Elon, we had the chance to see most of what exists inside SpaceX's brand new factory. Entering the factory, we can see a very large space, giving the impression that if you walk, you'll never finish. The factory structure seems quite simple with only a few machines so far, as it's not yet fully completed. When asked when this system will be operational, Elon didn't hesitate to declare, I mean, it'll be, this will be full with equipment in three months. Since the video was filmed in early June, this means the system will be operational by October. But that's just the beginning. According to Elon, Star Factory has the potential to expand further to the south of the production area, creating more space for their revolutionary production system. Previously, Jesse Anderson, SpaceX's Falcon Structures Manufacturing Engineering Manager, revealed, the latest phase of the factory currently under construction will come online this summer, giving us several 100,000 more square feet of space. This makes Star Factory one of the first commercial spaceports in the world dedicated to a single vehicle, in this case, the Starship. Once completed, the company's goal for this facility will be to produce one super large Starship rocket per day here. When you step into the factory, it is truly inspirational. My heart jumps out of my chest, Kate Tice, manager of SpaceX's Quality Systems Engineering, said during the same live stream. Now this will enable us to increase our production rate significantly as we build toward our long-term goal of producing one ship per day and coming off the production line soon, Starship version 2. During the visit to Star Factory, Elon shared some astonishing numbers about the production capabilities, particularly focusing on Starship. He revealed SpaceX's initial goal is to produce a ship every three days. This means SpaceX aims to create over 100 ships a year in the coming years. While I didn't mention Super Heavy, specifically, I believe its production rate will be similar to, if not greater than, that of Starship. Looking at further goals, Elon previously mentioned his ambition to make up to 300 ships a year. But his latest revelation is even more mind-blowing. He said, long term, we'll probably be making 1,000 ships a year. This means production speed would shift from a ship every three days to three ships every day. <laughs> Insane, right? Just think about it. Compare this to how long it takes NASA, Blue Origin, or ULA to create a complete SLS, New Glenn, or Vulcan prototype. It takes years. Not only will hardware production soar, but engine production is also set to skyrocket. SpaceX currently makes one Raptor engine every day. Recently, Elon responded to a tweet about the tour videos saying, We could build a lot more, but the next version of Raptor is really the one to scale up to production. We begin testing it in McGregor within a week or so. Wow! This means Star Factory will enable even more engines to be made daily. This new version could be the Raptor 3. Increasing production rates is crucial, as the frequency of launches will rise dramatically, possibly reaching thousands per year to support Mars colonization. Additionally, the draft EIS for Starship in Florida revealed that the new Starship version will feature up to 35 engines in Super Heavy and 9 engines in the ship, further driving the demand for engines. To achieve this, Star Factory will also feature distinct architectural upgrades. 
First, the new system offers an expansive space, as I mentioned earlier. Estimates suggest the total area of Star Factory will reach 60,000 square meters with an 18-meter height. The flat roof structure optimizes the internal workspace. It is far superior to the old dome-shaped tents, which couldn't optimize the workspace and struggle to house large components. These large parts often had to be taken outside the tent, exposing them to weather conditions. Meanwhile, Star Factory is a closed structure, ensuring work inside remains unaffected by the weather, the mud, or the animals. This always maintains a clean environment, just as Elon described. Everything's clean in this. There's no mud and dust. Everything used to have mud and dust, and yes, and birds and things. The most important innovation that Star Factory introduces is a seamless structure, unlike the separate systems of previous tents. With the old separately designed tents, each tent was responsible for producing a specific part of the Starship, such as the engines, rings, domes, or nose cones. This meant the production process could not be continuous. But the most crucial factor will still be the manufacturing technology. The current production process still has many manual steps, such as welding or bending, resulting in a relatively slow pace. Star Factory combines everything into one cohesive unit. This eliminates the need to move between structures, streamlining production steps, and boosting efficiency. Elon provided further insights into this transformation. He explained that a continuous production line would create a working rhythm or cadence. Stations will be arranged in a linear adjacent flow model with many stations on the line. While the new system eliminates the separation of steps, it remains highly specialized. Each station will focus on its specific task, but the steps will move seamlessly from one station to the next with equal workloads and time durations. This interconnected flow means problems can be spotted and fixed immediately without the delays caused by moving between distant structures. Star Factory's innovative design promises to revolutionize production, making it more efficient and responsive than ever before. Moreover, Star Factory's manufacturing technology will incorporate Tesla's manufacturing technology into its rocket production process. Manual steps will be reduced and all processes will gradually get automated. This advantage has been demonstrated by the increasing car production output of Tesla each year. Although rocket production is a bit more challenging than cars, and Starship will not achieve output levels equivalent to cars, adopting new manufacturing technology is still essential. With a new production line, SpaceX can produce enough rockets for future launch needs. All this proves Elon is very serious about settling on Mars. It's not a joke. It's not a con for more government money, although Musk won't turn that down. No, Mars is the reason for SpaceX. And now, in South Texas, Elon's getting close enough to Mars that he can almost taste the red dirt. Let's take a moment to truly grasp the sheer magnitude of this endeavor. Starship, serving as the upper stage for SpaceX's super heavy rocket, is arguably the most groundbreaking spacecraft ever made. No one has ever achieved a fully reusable rocket before, and the second stage, which ventures into space, poses the biggest challenge. While SpaceX still has a long way to go in terms of making the interior of Starship habitable for human travel to Mars, even the creation of a fully reusable vehicle capable of lifting 150 tons into low Earth orbit would be an extraordinary feat. This payload capacity surpasses that of the Saturn V rocket used in the Apollo 5 program. More impressively, Elon wants to build one of these every week. Compare that to NASA and its space launch system, the big rocket that the space agency has been developing for a decade. NASA will, in fact, toss each SLS core stage into the ocean after a single use. And Boeing doesn't have to make the engines, as the rocket uses 40-year-old space shuttle main engines. Despite this, and with nearly $2 billion in annual funding from NASA, Boeing's stretch goal for building core stages is 1-2 to two per year, sometime in the mid-2020s. SpaceX's stretch goal is to build one to two starships every week this year and to pare back construction costs to as low as two million each. No, it's absolutely mad, I agree, Musk said. This conventional space paradigm does not apply to what we're doing here. We're trying to build a massive fleet to make Mars habitable, to make life multiplanetary. I think we need probably on that order of a thousand ships, and each of those ships would have more payload than the Saturn V and be reusable. Musk has thought about this a lot, obviously. The point at which one says the goal is to make life multiplanetary, it means that we need to have a self-sustaining city on Mars, Musk said. That city has to survive if the resupply ships stop coming from Earth for any reason whatsoever. 
Doesn't matter why. If those resupply ships stop coming, does the city die out or not? In order to make something self-sustaining, you can't be missing anything. You must have all the ingredients. It can't be like, well, this thing's self-sustaining, except for this one little thing that we don't have. It can't be. That's like saying, well, we went this long on a sea voyage and we had everything except vitamin C. Okay, great. Now you're going to get scurvy and die. And painfully, by the way, it's going to suck. You're going to die slowly and painfully for lack of vitamin C. So we got to make sure that we got vitamin C there on Mars. Then it's like, okay, rough order of magnitude. What kind of tonnage do you need to make it self-sustaining? It's probably not less than a million tons. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.